The following lecture by Trigueirinho, Seeds of Inner Transformation, with simultaneous translation into English, was recorded live in Brazil in May 2002. Uma pessoa está contando um sonho que ela teve. Someone is telling us about her e dream. E veio a dúvida se esse sonho and she is wondering foi enviado pela mente. If that dream se é was sent by the mind mental, itself, ou se if it is a mental situation, um aviso, ou or if it, it has come to her as a warning or some message from the spirit. And she is asking how to sonho. discern where a dream may be coming from. What the spirit sends or what the spirit conveys is always evolutionary and is never depressive. It is never involutionary. Quando o espírito mostra uma coisa, ele nunca mostra o passado. And when the spirit presents something, it never shows the past. It never refers to things which are already gone. When we begin to remember the past, what happened then, and when we begin to receive visions and dreams of past experiences, these do not come from the spirit. The spirit never brings up the past. What comes from the spirit is the present. And it is such a complete present that it takes in everything that was lived as well as what is going to be lived, but not as a kind of premonition. The spirit does not tell us what is going to happen. Premonition belongs to and comes from another level, not from the spirit. The spirit shows the present, but it is such a complete present that within the vision of the present, you perceive the future, but it doesn't mean the spirit is showing it. This is because the vision of the spirit encompasses everything. So this is quite different. When you have a vision of the Spirit or the Spirit shows you a sign or shows you something, maybe you won't get to know facts, but if it shows you a sign, you can get prepared for whatever comes or you can become healed of everything that has gone and is past. Although the Spirit does not speak either of the past or the future, its presence includes it all. It includes the healing of the past and it includes the preparation for the future. Can you see what the Spirit is about? The Spirit has nothing to do with material facts. The Spirit is life, the life of all of this. So if a dream shows the past, what already happened, or depressing experiences, it does not come from the spirit. It comes from the astral level, it comes from the lower mental level, it comes from the person's subconscious, or it comes from some premonitory level of the person. When the spirit shows something, when we are facing a fact of the spirit, no matter what it is showing us, it is never judging us. So in the spirit there is no criticism. In the spirit there is no judgment. If you are in a specific situation and the spirit shows you something, you can see your situation more clearly because in that presentation, in that vision, no judgment is made of you. The spirit does not judge, the spirit does not criticize. So there is no judgment, there is no criticism in what the spirit shows. So e if we have dele, a dream, and after that coisa, we feel remorseful about something, we become sad or depressed, this did not Qualquer come from the Spirit. Anything that for, comes from the Spirit, no matter assim. what, does que not make us feel this way. What comes from the Spirit renews us. It helps us vida. find our life within ourselves. E uma pessoa diz que a parte sensitiva dela 
está desaparecendo. Someone here says that her sensitivity is disappearing. She says she used to have dreams and premonitions. She used to know what was about to happen so she could help in some way and get ready. Ela não tem mais isso. And now this no longer happens. Everything has disappeared like a source of water that has dried up. She says she has done nothing to justify losing those gifts she used to have. One of the ways the Spirit uses to purify our sensitiveness our astral aspect, our sensate aspect, is to weaken this part in us. So we can be gifted. We can have the gift of premonition. We can have gifts of vision and perception. If we are to develop ourselves, if we are to change our point of reference and begin to perceive things in a different way and not through a sensate channel, if this is meant for us, then the spirit weakens these channels, the spirit weakens all these, and the spirit puts an end to all this. And this kind of purification which comes before another level of understanding and of vision, this kind of purification comes and leaves the person with a sense of emptiness for a while. The new way of being, the new way of understanding, the new way of perceiving things does not come right away. Esta forma velha, esta forma antiga, this old esta pattern forma is taken away from us. This old way, Isso this way é that no longer corresponds to our consciousness is removed, cleansed um and purified. And não for a while, we are left without forma. anything. The Nós new way does not come right um away. Nesse vazio. We need to experience emptiness for a while, neither knowing nor not knowing things. This stage is somewhat uncomfortable for those who were used to perceiving things, to seeing things, to having premonitions, to those who were sensitive, and they now remain in this state which is nothingness. This goes on for a while. It stays for a while until things settle down, until things change their rhythm in the person, or at least until the person gives up the old rhythm and gets rid of the old way of doing things, of feeling, of seeing, of perceiving. We have to get away from all that which has to be cleaned out in order to start a new way, to begin the new. This emptiness inside us can last for a longer or for a shorter time, depending on the rhythm the spirit is imprinting on our development, or also depending on the service the soul will have to fulfill. The same happens to our ability to pray and to our ability to contemplate. We can develop this ability. We can have a life of prayer. We can have a contemplative life. We can be used to reading, to pondering upon what we read, to keeping silence afterwards. These spiritual exercises that many people practice and when we learn how to do these things, they all become included in our habits. So someone may be praying without any effort. Someone may attain a very meaningful life of prayer. Someone may get a lot of strength, a lot of energy from his or her prayer life, from pondering and from reading. So these things things work within us. We begin to grow. Many things happen. Our consciousness expands. But everything has its time. 
Everything has its cycle. Suddenly, a cycle may come about in which one's consciousness will be expanded. We will be able to understand things better than before, or we will be able to learn something no longer depending on the same channel as before. Then one's prayer life becomes empty. And even if one tries to pray with that same intensity as before, one can no longer achieve it. Even if one takes a book and reads it, concentrates on it, remains silent to meditate on it, and to live it. There are people who study this way. They try to carry out in themselves what they are reading. This is a way of self-perfecting. It is a way of studying. It is a way of maturing one's inner organs of perception. For instance, if you take a book of the mystics, or take a book inspired by our higher brothers from the cosmos, there are passages, there are things in those books, there are situations there that we can live while we read. We can adapt ourselves there, we can get into those situations and live those situations in our imagination. There are many people who study this way. Diligent students use these methods to bring about certain transformations, and suddenly these can come to an end. Suddenly all this can cease, even if you want it to go on. It also happens in the field of prayer, in the field of study, of reflection. This is where you should be aware because a new way to do this work will turn up or a more appropriate way for you to do it at present. It could well be that it has come to an end for a time in order to give your inner nuclei or to give your subtle bodies a moment of distension, a possibility and an opportunity to have other contacts, not through your mental will. But then your mental will is no longer able to do this work, and so your inner bodies, the subtle bodies, your inner nuclei, will find other ways to do this work. We have to know how to live those stages, how to live those cycles, without disconnecting from our intention, from our aspiration to know, to perfect ourselves, to grow in consciousness, to serve. Even when we are faced with such unclear situations, or even when we find ourselves at the end of some cycle, we must not lose our aspiration. We must live this always as aspiration, always attentive, because suddenly something starts up. All of a sudden, a different form appears, and you only realize it after it has emerged. And if you become discordant, if you get worried, depressed, or if you get uneasy, thinking that you have done something wrong, this can hinder your perception of what is really happening. And at these moments when it seems that nothing is happening, when things seem to be rather stagnant, Sometimes, things are actually happening even faster, but at such an inward level, at such a deep level, that we cannot even perceive because we are not used to it or we are not prepared to perceive things at a level beyond that normal perception we used to have beyond that kind of psychic and sensitive perception. And we are not accustomed yet. We are not prepared yet. We have no experience in perceiving an inner movement on a level beyond phenomena, on a level that does not involve us mentally, emotionally, or etherically. 
We could be very self-assured in our way of praying and our way of meditating and our way of reading and suddenly it all becomes weak and we no longer find any strength, any vigor, any security there. This is not important. What really matters is for us not to lose sight of our aim. It is important for us not to let go of our intention. What matters is for us not to give up being surrendered, to not stop being ready, flexible, open. This is what matters, because then if we are to become aware of what is happening, because there is always something happening to us, the spirit does not stop, evolution does not stop, suddenly we begin to perceive something else. And then we notice that things are happening to us in a different way, and so we now begin to be aware of it. But for this we must not be in discordance, we must not be in disharmony with these moments and with these unprecedented states of dryness and emptiness. Those states do not affect only the personality. They do not only affect the ego. They reach the soul as well, because the soul can be in a process of understanding many inner matters, many inner facts. The soul can have a glimpse of the path of evolution it is treading. It can also experience such moments. And this happens so that certain imperfections, not only from the soul, but also from the personality, may be repositioned. And so a personality or an ego or a mind that is used to feeling certain processes, to perceiving certain processes, this mind and this personality can build up certain imperfections because it is in this situation. It can build up certain characteristics of pride, for instance, certain aspects of vanity. It can create such a sense of security that it stops making an effort. So we may be so sure of our inner being and of our inner life, we can be so confident of this that because we are so confident, in our external life we stop striving the way we are meant to. In our external life, we fail to manifest the expression of our own potential. So many things are curtailed in us and many things are removed from our perception so that externally we begin to strive, so that out here we begin to work a bit or that out here we activate our potential. This is something that may not happen when we are very self-confident as to what is within and what is taking place within us. Often we are entrusted with a task or there is a task in view for us a task for which we have been fairly well trained and now that task will be presented to us it will turn up for us to undertake it in a more complete in a more thoroughgoing way so for us to take up this task more completely and for us to evolve in this task so that over time we can place more value on the task in order for us to have a, a wider field of service through this task. Perhaps we will have to put in a bit more effort. So in these times, the bases we used to rely on are taken away from us. The bases are actually there, but our awareness of the bases is taken away. Our awareness of being confident in a specific matter is dislocated. And often, e even while we carry out the task and while we fulfill the task, we are not even sure 
that it is really occurring there because we were so used to being aware, including aware of the energy that went through us, and suddenly we carry on doing things, no longer perceiving anything. This will require greater effort from us. It will require us to confirm our vows, but not only confirm inner vows, but external ones as well, as well, as humans as well. So there is a change in the frequency of what is radiated by the individual. It stops being something lukewarm weak and ineffective, to become something more defined, to become something more precise, something stronger and steadier. Some people go through these crises, as did the person who has raised these issues, and these things also, these moments of disheartening, these moments of lack of confidence, these moments of lack of clarity, these can help us to have more devotion and gentleness when dealing with inner matters, when dealing with subtle matters. They help us turn inward, seeking our inner self, seeking our inner nucleus with more devotion, with more care and more strength, and especially without a certain apprehension that in the end everything will become depleted and that we will no longer have any reason to live. Because the individuals who have these contacts or the ones who have these experiences or those who feel in touch with their own inner being, when these links are enfeebled, these individuals feel as if they were going to die. They no longer feel alive. They have the exact feeling that they are about to disincarnate, that they are going to collapse. This is one point. Now, the other point is that when it happens, we don't have to give in to this lethargy, this inertia, this kind of sluggishness of our intermediate levels that react to certain vibrations or to certain changes which are necessary for our vibration. In all situations, regardless of what happens or the reason for its happening, we must never forget our aim and we must never forego that attitude of surrendering, that attitude of offering and not abandon our aspiration to serve, to be useful, to be willing. We must not let our aspiration diminish. We must nurture this aspiration because in these intervals or these gaps or in these crises, our aspiration needs not slacken. It need not be extinguished. It would be better if it did not go out, because later on to light it up again would require a grace. A special grace would be needed. So it, uh, it is up to us not to let it go out and to be able to understand those periods that are denser than the ones we used to experience. In general, and usually, if we go through such a crisis adequately, if we are patient and if we have faith, because here we cannot make out the limits very well, we need a lot of patience and faith. We don't know where one thing ends and another begins. So patience and faith must be very evident and very alive there. And sometimes we have to use this faith, and sometimes we have to be very alive in this faith, and at some point, when this faith weakens a little, we have to use patience. We have to have patience, very active. Patience must be always on hand to enter there at any time. What matters is not to get into conflict. What matters is not to struggle with these situations. Otherwise, we 
really lose the plumb line of all these movements which are natural in inner life, which are the movements we all know in inner life. Principalmente nesses momentos de baixa percepção, With all this, nós in these moments of clouded perception, we notice the presence e of our imperfections. And while we were very contatos, active in these contexts, while we were seguros, very confident, nossas some of our um imperfections alto, went by unnoticed. Muito, we hardly noticed them. Because we had been busy, we had been caught up in all the positive things that were happening in our inner lives, all the positive things taking place in our self-observation, in the study of ourselves. With that, our imperfections always get left behind, because imperfections go on. Imperfections do not disappear, all of them. Então throughout this process. So you can be evolving, you can be growing, your consciousness may be growing. While you are in an upward movement, you do not notice your imperfections so much. You even think that some of them have gone, illusion, because when these moments of crisis come about, the imperfections are there. So then you have eyes to see them. And then you have E aí você vê que a imperfeição Already time está lá, to pay attention to them. Then you can see that você the imperfections um are there. They don't um disappear all at once. Este you have a lot of work to do, slow work. This work really does get done, but imperfection is inherent to certain matéria. things in matter, e é and it is inherent to some of mesmo our cells, sutis, even to subtle cells, mentais, mental cells, mesmo em nível da alma, even on the soul level. Some imperfections remain. These are imperfections that will be worked on later on. Or, or they are imperfections that will be worked on indirectly after we have attained an area of greater safety. Because to deal with certain imperfections of ours, while we are not really self-confident about certain things, is very dangerous, it's quite risky. To deal with certain imperfections, or rather, to become purified, or for certain imperfections of ours to become transformed, we have to have reached another level of evolution so that we can bear the energy that now comes a little bit stronger and that leaves a kind of emptiness in regard to certain things we were used to, because we are also used to our imperfections. Our imperfections have many coatings, and we are used to them, to those garments. If we were totally free from imperfections, we would feel very bad, because we are not yet ready to be perfect. We are not então, yet ready to be pure. So these things require patience. Tanto, so when you see that you are tanto, working so hard, that you tanto, want it so much, that you have coisas, evolved so much, that you understand other ponto, things, and your consciousness has reached another level, and in some ponto, things you are jeito, still spinning your wheels, then you need patience and faith. Que vão a ser because those are things que vão a ser that mudadas, will begin to be dealt with, that will begin to be changed, or that will begin to be ousted, thrown out, after you start feeling confident, after you get less upset você, with whatever happens to you. E claro que às vezes, of course, sometimes we see these imperfections much more distinctly. We see them much more clearly, precisely for us to move beyond that state. We won't get rid of an imperfection just by wanting to be pure. That is impregnated in us. It is stuck there. It is embedded in our psychological 
and external structure. Então, primeiro, Precisa que você esteja so, frente a frente first of com all, aquilo, we have to confront it. We have to dislike it. Aquilo, we have to disclaim it and not want it anymore. And if aquilo, we are really able to repel aquilo, that, então if we go so far as to discard it, that begins to loosen up. It begins to get unstuck because it no longer então, gets any force, nurturing from you. So if that force is no longer receiving backing from you, it will let go on its own. And this is a very harmonious, very tranquil process when it is carried out with faith, when it is experienced with faith and with patience. And we can always be aware that it is not the, our mind that decides things. Our mind makes its choices, it makes its decision. One's mind asks, one mind One's Mas mind begs, acontece, one's mind prays. But what really happens does not depend on all this. What happens depends on the spirit, on the soul, that begins to make those changes which brings about this detachment and therefore our transmutation. The reason for this is that to attain a total and complete freedom from an imperfect state on the level of spirit, on the level of the monad, a meaningful change has to be taking place. On that level, the monad or the spirit has to be really going through a process of transformation which takes place on the cosmic level, so that this can flow through here. In order for our human imperfections, which are part of our being, to be finally removed or to finally be transformed, if there is any usable matter there, of all this, that to a certain extent stays with us and that we want to be rid of, not all of this is always to be discarded. Our imperfections may contain things which can be the seeds of future positive things. There may be seeds of future evolutionary conditions within our imperfection, within our negative load, there may be seeds, seeds of good, which are mixed in there with other things, and those seeds can be salvaged and they can become transformed into future goods, into future evolutionary situations. The spirit can see all this. So we often want to be different at any cost. No way. You are going to be a different being, but within your present state, there are seeds that can be salvaged. But within those things that you like the least, within those things which you dislike the most, right there in the middle, not everything of course, not even most of it, but in the middle of it, there may be at least one seed of one thing that is evolutionary. And it is up to you to salvage this. You do not free yourself from this load if you do not know how to gather from there that which is worthwhile, which is useful for something else. This is the person's transformation. Transformation does not come about in jolts all of a sudden. Transformation does not take place by removing everything and receiving everything new. Within the old man, inside the old man, within the negative things, within things that are already obsolete, there is something you must salvage in there. There is something that must be saved, that has to be uplifted in there. After that everything Mas can fall apart, but until é that something is uplifted, until it is recognized, you do not make your peace with what is inside of you, because many of our imperfections have become imperfections, because somewhere along the way we made a mistake, somewhere along the way we failed to understand something. 
So we deflected an impulse that turned into something else. It became an imperfection. It became a situation of involution. But within it, there is always something worthwhile. The, within it, there is always something that is useful. And we often see this in the reactions of others. Often we are coping with our own selves and we fail to see anything useful in what we are doing or in what we are. We really cannot see because we want something else. We want to be transformed. transformed. No one in this path is satisfied with what he or she is or even with how he or she is. But here we need a balance because in this dissatisfaction, in this strong impression that we have to be different, we cannot include everything. There are seeds in there. There are aspects which may be necessary in a future structure, which build a bridge with a future situation. We can often see in other people the reflex of our good seeds. We ourselves do not know where they are or what they are, because we have already worked a little on humility, or we have suffered enough already. And if we have either become humble or have suffered, we, then we learn to be distrustful of ourselves. And so we go to the opposite end. Well, I'm not worth anything. At this point, you must go on. You must carry on. Even if you think you are worthless, you must continue. You must keep on going. You must go ahead as if nothing were really happening. You must act as if you were good, because then you will see in others the reflex of what is worthy in you. The others show you what is worthy in you, because the others receive something from you, and so they transform themselves. Then you can see in the transformation of others what they received from you, what you have transmitted. These can be small things, but they come from the seeds. They come from what you have inside of you. And you must learn to recognize those valid aspects within the aggregation of powers that you must transform transcend, that you are working on transcending. And someone is asking, when we reach the point of becoming detached from the things of the world, how can we differentiate this detachment from a subconscious will to abandon the world and to disincarnate. Well, when we begin to feel detached from things of the world, and this is a healthy process, as this detachment from the things of the world increases, our willingness to serve the world also increases, because you can only really serve the world after you have become detached from it. What good can you do to the world if you are attached to it? So, when you begin to feel a detachment from the things of the world, it doesn't mean that it is time to disincarnate. It's not the time to abandon the world. It is time for you finally to start serving the world. Because if you are detached from the world, if you are detached from things, if you are detached from beings, from people, so if you are feeling detachment, this is the time for you to begin serving because then you will serve where it is necessary. You will serve at the right time in the right thing. You are not attached to anything. You are not involved with the world. You are not involved with people. So then you can serve correctly. So this detachment is not a sign that you are to abandon everything on the path of service. This detachment is a sign that the time has finally come for you to serve, to serve the way you are meant to serve.